Let's take a look at what makes Excel such a powerful application and see what makes this latest version of Excel so different from previous versions. If you have used Excel before, you are probably familiar with using a main menu, various toolbars, drop-down boxes, and pop-up dialog boxes that allow you to create the exact spreadsheet document you're looking for. This version of Excel uses an entirely different layout with a more efficient, easy-to-navigate interface. This new interface is based on a ribbon, contextual tabs, and galleries. Let's take a closer look. The first thing we notice is the top of the screen looks more crowded than before with icons, buttons, tabs, and menu items. This may be confusing at first sight, but as we're about to see, they are actually going to make our life easier. Some of these elements are specific to Excel, while other buttons and features are also found in other Microsoft Office 2007 applications like Word and PowerPoint. Excel documents are called workbooks. Think of this by picturing a book with lots of pages of calculations, similar to older paper-based accounting ledgers. Each page is called a worksheet. At the top of the screen is the title bar. This area displays the name of our workbook. Right now, since we're looking at a new, unnamed document, it says Book 1. The title bar allows us to activate and move Excel's application window. It also displays the application and workbooks currently being used. Microsoft Excel is the application name. In the far right corner of the title bar are three square boxes, the standard Windows sizing tools. Minimize, which removes the screen from the desktop and leaves a link on the status bar. Maximize, which maximizes the window to full screen mode. And Close, which closes Excel. Viewers, if the Excel application window does not completely fill up the computer screen, click the Maximize button. Just below the title bar is the new user interface known as the Ribbon. The Ribbon is divided into two main areas, a top level, which is the first row, and a secondary level, which is the area beneath the first row. The top level displays a set of contextual tabs. These tabs group together the commands that are based on that category. Choosing a contextual tab determines which tools are displayed in the secondary level of the Ribbon below them. Instead of showing all of the Excel tools at once, we see only the tools needed for the specific task or area we are currently working on. At this point, the Home tab is highlighted. This is the default tab whenever a new document opens. All the tools currently displayed in the Ribbon have to do with entering of text and formatting cells, the most common tools needed when modifying or creating an Excel worksheet. To the right of the Home tab, click the Insert Contextual tab, and all the tools in the secondary level of the ribbon change to commands related to inserting items into a document. Take a look at the large circular button directly to the left of the Home tab. The button is still part of the ribbon, but doesn't appear as a contextual tab. Instead, it looks like a colorful round Office logo and is called the Office button. This button has taken the place of the traditional file menu from other applications or previous versions of Excel. It may look new, but it still contains the same functionality we are used to. Click the Office button, and a list of menu options opens, such as creating a new document, opening a workbook, saving, printing, or finalizing our document for distribution. Close the menu by clicking anywhere away from the drop-down box. Let's step away from the ribbon for a moment. Notice a set of buttons directly to the right of the Office button next to the title bar. Some features and tools in Excel are so important that Microsoft decided to give users instant access to them. These are the tools on the Quick Access Toolbar. Unlike the tools underneath the contextual tabs, these buttons stay the same no matter which tab is highlighted in the ribbon. Let's look at what buttons are available. It's important to save our work often. Microsoft has included the Save command as a button in the Quick Access Toolbar just to the right of the Office button. It looks like a floppy disk. On the right of the Save button are two more preset buttons in the Quick Access Toolbar. Undo, which cancels or reverses our most recent action, and Redo, which duplicates whatever our last action was. Notice these two buttons are grayed out, meaning they are currently unavailable. If we tried clicking them, nothing happens. 
As soon as we enter text and have some actions to undo or repeat, these buttons will change color and become available. The last button in the Quick Access Toolbar allows us to customize this toolbar. Click the drop-down arrow. We can add more buttons to the toolbar by placing a check mark next to the item in this list, such as Open, Spelling, and Sorting. Click New. Now we have a shortcut to creating a new file. Click the Customize button again. We are not limited to just these options. Select More Commands. We now have a larger selection of icons we can add to our Quick Access Toolbar. Highlight the Quick Print option from the list on the left and click Add. Click OK. Now the Print tool is on our toolbar. Clicking this button will allow us to quickly print our document. In previous versions of Excel, the toolbar was directly above the presentation. We can move the toolbar to the bottom of the ribbon. Click the down arrow next to the Quick Access Toolbar and choose the option Show Below the Ribbon. The toolbar disappears from the top of the ribbon and reappears at the bottom. However, this takes away space to display our document. Let's move the Quick Access Toolbar back to the top of the ribbon. Click the down arrow at the right of the toolbar one more time and choose the option that says Show Above the Ribbon. The toolbar is back where it started. There are a few more tools in the top level of the ribbon. All the way to the right side is a button with a question mark. Click that button, and a window opens with a list of different help options available. Click the Close button in the upper right corner of the Help window to close it. Excel files are called workbooks. Think of a workbook like a notebook with calculations and notes on each page. The Next button lets us minimize the entire workbook within our workspace. It looks like a single bar. Click it, and our whole book minimizes to the bottom of Excel. The button that looks like two windows and lets us open the workbook as a separate window inside the workspace. Let's leave that button alone for now and instead, click the Maximize button next to it. Now our workbook takes up all the area inside the Excel workspace again. When thinking of a workbook as a notebook, the pages inside the notebook are worksheets. Theoretically, the only limit on the number of worksheets in a workbook is the amount of memory available to your computer, so don't worry about running out of available space. Below the ribbon is the active worksheet that looks like a large grid. This is where we input our information and create our calculations. Excel uses a combination of rows and columns to tell us what part of the worksheet, or cell, we are on. Along the left side is a series of numbers which tell us what row we're on. Along the top row are letters. They tell us what column we're on. Click the cell that's two down and two over. B2 appears in the name box, which is under the ribbon, on the left-hand side. We'll use the name box often in our lesson. Next to the namespace is the formula bar where we enter text, numbers, and equations. We will also work extensively with the formula bar in this lesson. At the bottom of this worksheet are tools to help us navigate between the different worksheets in this workbook. There are three tabs named Sheet 1, Sheet 2, and Sheet 3. By default, workbooks start with three worksheets. We can change which worksheet we're working on by clicking another worksheet's name. Having multiple worksheets gives us flexibility in storing data. We can have one worksheet that records income and expenses, another for personnel information, and a third that tracks inventory. The icon to the right of Sheet 3 lets us add more worksheets to our workbook. On the right side of the worksheet is the scroll bar. We can quickly move through large documents by clicking the scroll bar and dragging it up and down. We can also click the arrows at the top and bottom of the scroll bar to scroll one row at a time. A matching scroll bar sits at the bottom right, allowing us to scroll from left to right. The status bar is at the bottom of the screen and allows us to view a number of at-a-glance values related to our worksheet. Let's learn how to adjust what our status bar displays. Right-click anywhere on the status bar. This is the status bar configuration menu. 
it allows us to display the average count or sum of any selected numbers and display whether the caps lock, num lock, or scroll lock are on. We'll learn how to use several of these shortcuts as we progress through the lesson. Click anywhere on the worksheet to hide the menu.